Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Gaming on the Brain podcast. I'm Mark. I'm Glenn. This uh, this week we're going to talk about an Amco classic, one of the best racing games that was ever created, Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer, and we will be targeting the PlayStation 1 version, but we'll obviously, as we do, talk about some of the other versions, spin-offs, things yeah. like that, you know, some of the special versions in the arcade and such as well. Yeah, we decided to take a slightly different uh, approach this time and focus more on a, a conversion of the game as opposed to the arcade version itself. But we've got the reasons for that and we will uh, go into that in the podcast itself. Yeah. And by the way, Andy, you were right, it was Ridge Racer, so that was a very good guess. So, uh, if you are listening to this episode, right. I will that's, respond that's... to you after the episode goes live to say well done on that one. The uh, other thing of note, um, just want to say a thank you to everybody who subscribed to the YouTube channel. I know it's not a big number, but we've hit a milestone of 10 subscribers. Woohoo! Why not? Great. <laughs> we do well. Um, you know, if you're enjoying the content... AVGN should be shitting himself now. Oh, he'll, he'll be shatting his pants, <laughs> mate. Shit, shit pickle will be definitely uh, shatting shit, it. Shit pickle, shit pickle, shit pickle. If you're, <laughs> if you're enjoying the content, you know, please, please do subscribe to the channel. Drop us some comments. Give us a like. You know, we want to engage with you guys, as we've said every week. Um, one more thing as well of note, the, there is a plan to do a, a bonus episode for Pit Fighter, which will be um, basically a slideshow of the development documentation that Glenn managed to lay his hands on. This, is um, it. this should be interesting to some who like this side of things, concept art and uh, just uh, what went into creating the game itself. I mean, they said that not everyone will be interested, but I always find this type of material um, just... They say it's just historical stuff that you wouldn't you wouldn't find anywhere else really. There's, there's quite a package of documentation there, so I'll um, I'll drop it onto a YouTube video, um, like a slideshow, like I say, and give people the opportunity to have a look and see what's there. You know, um, that'll pretty much do us for the introduction. We will see you guys after the short musical interlude. Yeah, speak so, to you soon. See you soon. You've got gaming on the brain. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Gaming on the Brain podcast. As always, I'm Mark, and I'm here with Glenn. Hello there. How are you doing? Hope you're all doing well. Today we've got a we've got something a little bit different from the norm. Uh, if you consider the norm to be the last few episodes, this was actually um, I asked Glenn earlier this week what he would like to do this week, and I must say I was absolutely shocked by his response because it's not something that's in his wheelhouse. Throw him for a loop just a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll today, be in a key. <laughs> today's episode, Glenn, you might as well see it because it was you who chose it. Well, I decided to pick Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer. And specifically Ridge Racer on the PlayStation because we feel like it's the more complete game. Yeah. But we do want to touch, obviously, on the other versions. Yeah. Um, and we're going to start off, I think, with the arcade version, Glenn. So I'm going to hand over to you for that if you want to have a chat about that. Well, just uh, with one more quick mention of the PlayStation version before I move into the uh, the arcade segment fully. Um, I bought this game as part of a PlayStation package back in 1995. Got two of the games with it. It was Destruction Derby and Twisted Metal 1. All three games which I love because I love this type of game as well, as well as beat em ups and, and fighting games. And um, I'd never played Ridge Racer in the arcade at, at that time. You've probably actually seen a pattern... Now, with many of our podcasts that we've, at least one of us has either played a console conversion before moving back to check out the original, like as, as in an arcade version. Uh, and to be fair, nothing is different here in the, in this part. But um, the reason we want to focus on the PlayStation version is because, it, as Mark says, it's much more complete. It takes the arcade game and just builds on it in every single way. Uh, but but we have to start at the beginning, and the arcade game was the beginning. And uh, Ridge Racer... So Ridge Racer, when Ridge Racer came out in 1993, um, Namco, as many would know, massive, uh, fantastic company that uh, have been around for such a long time and still are and uh, have created some amazing games throughout the decades. And uh, like I say, Ridge Racer, it stood out at the time because it was for, for contemporary, uh, for 1993 at the time, and they said 1995 there, but I was thinking about something else. For 1993, it was sort of that decade uh, outrun. 
to, yeah. some, to some degree. I mean, obviously, all of you will remember Outrun. Uh, even in 1993, cabinets of Outrun were still kicking about, yeah, especially the Deluxe, which is the big red seen, cabinet. You never seen much of Outrunners, which was that. Yeah, well, the sequel, yeah, it had a Mega Drive version. That might be one interesting yeah. one for the future because there's an interesting story with that, with the Mega Drive game as well. But um, yeah, so like I said, Outrun was, was the. Was what Ridge Race did did in 1986? What Ridge Racer did in 1993? In my own personal opinion, um, it's a it's a great it's a, it's an amazing game. I mean, it looks fun. It's still thing is it, it's it's aged quite well. I mean, I might not be not everyone might say that. I mean, you can look at all the polygons and some people scoff where uh, a lot of 2D sprite work just looks fantastic. So even looking at say uh, Street Fighter Two from 1991, still looks good. I mean, it's colourful. Good animation, you know, the good looking games. Now, some of the earlier polygon games I don't think they are as much as the pioneers of their time. They don't look great now, they haven't aged well, but Ridge Racer uh, is different. I think anything, again, my own personal opinion, but I think anything where um, anything which was a driving game, so again, Ridge Racer and Daytona is another good example. Uh, any of those types of games, the cars still look quite good because you've got much less in the way of angles and figures. So That's you know, right. yeah. yeah, you don't you don't get angular looking human characters, you know, in, yeah. in a game like that. So yeah. cars all, look all racing games really lend themselves to the transition to three D more than any other genre, in yeah. my opinion. Um, Ridge, so Ridge Racer came at ninety three. So uh, a little bit of history about its competitors as well, quickly. In the year it came out, it came out between two other very big racing games, both from a very big competitor, Sega, uh, one of which was VR, uh, Virtua Racing, sorry, Virtua Racing in 1992. Um, now, this is a game that, in my opinion, again, the year, can't really say anything against the year, but for just one year previously, uh, Virtua Racing's cars, I think they're... Uh, polygons have aged a bit more well, poorly. It was, it was flat shaded polygons yeah. as well. You didn't yeah, have no, a garage that's it. Yeah, no garage. No, it's gonna. It's not gonna look as good. But obviously, it, to look at that game now, it, it hasn't aged as well. Uh, whereas, as, as again, obviously, Ridge Racer has. And another competitor came out in 1994, which was Daytona Racing, probably Ridge Racer's biggest competitor, really, uh, with it also coming out in the Saturn round about the same time. And I think Daytona looks great. That still does look very good. It's still fantastic. Yeah, very colourful yeah, graphics. And, and, well. Yeah. And it, it, so it, it's a worthy competitor to Ridge, you know. And uh, But again, so just for that, just just so you get your head around a little bit of the competition, if you if you weren't around at that time or you didn't really take a lot of interest. Um, <laughs> Ridge Race has got probably one of the best soundtracks ever created. I mean, if you're playing that game in a deluxe cabinet, and you're just you're sitting there chilling to the tunes. Honestly, it's just fantastic. Like rare hero, you know. Uh, <laughs> honest man, it's it's some of the music with. Uh, oh, it's... I, 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 I'm 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 not frightened to be called sad, but I, I took the I ripped the tunes off the PlayStation CD with it being in red book. Yeah, and I put them on my computer desktop at the time, so I'd listen to them all the time. They were fantastic. There's Type... a couple couple of the tracks on there. Uh, they really get you going, don't they? Yeah. They get you into the game and the and just get you pumping for the like. The, the vibe of the whole game really like oh, so it's really fantastic very right? very well done the music um uh, the ridge racer came out in two main versions now there is some other versions in the arcade uh, at least one very important version but we're going to get into that separately because it's got its own little history and it's it's just very interesting anyway to 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 touch on this this other cabinet style if i can even call it a cabinet it's more of an attraction, an attraction it, yeah. if we get into it you know but anyway, it will came out as it stands production model uh, Ridge Racer arcade games came out in two versions. It was a standard cabinet, the deluxe cabinet. Uh, basically very similar to what you've expected from, say, Outrun again, to compare. Standard is a stand-up cabinet with a steering wheel and gears and a pedal. So what you'd expect from the time, and your deluxe is your sit-down full-size, well, almost full-size car, you know. I mean, again, um, exactly what you've seen going through the 80s and the early 90s with VR, uh, with virtual racing and, and, and such. Uh, but great fun to be able to play that with having some force feedback as well. And uh, wasn't well, there a triple monitor version of? There is, and we're, again, I mean, we can touch on that now if you like, because from what, although I've never seen a cabinet, and I've to go on by one. the history, we're going by the history that I've looked into. Now I know for a fact that the mystery version that we're going to touch on later also uses a three monitor system. Yeah. So if you look at certain emulators and you look at the version of this game in those emulators, they're using a three-monitor setup. So I don't know, to be to be hunts and certain, if they are one and the same or if it is a separate three-monitor game. What was that game called? Was it Ferrari F335? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah with three Ferrari three monitors. Yeah, five. Yeah, so yeah, and Sega. that was a, that was an actual three, yeah, by Sega, and that was an actual yeah. three-monitor setup. But that came out later, didn't it? 
a few years later. But yeah. I wonder. So it's quite possible the very the, the very likely is a three monitor version of uh, Ridge Racer out there that maybe has a wider cabinet or possibly a very different style of uh, deluxe sit down. Oh, it's, it's the same. It's I've, I've seen the cabinet on photographs, and it's right. the same same sit down cabinet, except it's just it's got a bigger bulkier back end where you've yeah. got three monitors you side by side. There, so it does, they, look, yeah. they look to be about like thirty two inch monitors like yeah. three of them mounted together so it's a canny size so and it looks like that version as well is based on regular ridge racer though it's yeah, got no yeah. new features or cars or trucks or anything so no, as it, far as i'm aware it, yeah, it's it the is. Bog so standard ridge that, racer experience but with triple monitor setup that means it is at least different enough from the uh from the attraction version that we'll talk about because that's got yeah. one or two not, nothing massively different but it's got at least one or two little features of its own that gives it a, a, a little degree of standalone but yeah. Um, obviously, again, just talking about uh, Ridge Racer's two main competitors at the time, uh, I still think, and not just because the article is about this game, but Ridge Racer just blew both of them off the track. I mean, Daytona, not as much, because that still is a great game, and obviously you've got to remember there's a year between uh, Virtual Racing and, and, and Ridge Racer, but it still was, for my my own opinion, the best of the three of those uh, Three, those three big racing I, games. I love the game of Daytona. I do. I really, really. I mean, virtual racing. I've never actually seen it in an arcade, if I'm honest. I don't think um, I have actually. But Day, Daytona, I've had many opportunities and, and have played Daytona many times in the arcade, and it's still a great game. Um, but I still, I would, if you know, if I had Daytona and Ridge Racer sat side by side, I'd jump in Ridge Racer. Yeah, and it's games that's familiar out to you, me as well. I mean, I think you know. Again, not to swear too far. I know we always do this, but. I hope when we do swear a bit from the main article, we do just give you other little nuggets of info that are at least sort of Useful. somewhat important. But um, Daytona, obviously, when it came out with Saturn, it wasn't very well received. The conversion itself nah, was quite it was, poor. It was rough. Draw yeah. distance and that, and had rough graphics. So while the Ridge Racer PlayStation conversion was really well received, Daytona wasn't as well, which obviously, to some degree, depending on which way you look at it, would either make the arcade game more or less popular because more people might sort of, because they couldn't get their fix at home, they'd go back to play the arcade machine. But others who might have played it on the Saturn first and ever seen it in the arcade might say, I'm not touching that because it's shite. Yeah. You know, so this could have worked either way for or against the Daytona arcade machine. Yeah, very true. You know, but um, anyway, just a quick, quick uh, few mentions about the arcade game itself, just about its gameplay, what you're getting at. I mean, again, great smooth gameplay. I don't need to go too much into that because Mark will touch on that in the PlayStation version where gameplay is extremely close. Although there's some nuance. Yeah, there's, there's some it's differences very in the drift mechanics, which I'll explain why we're talking yeah. more about the PlayStation version. Well, in the arcade game, you, you have only one car, uh, one playable car, all the rest of the cars, and there's uh, there'll be... Is the devil car in the arcade game, actually? I don't know. Don't I'm... think we've ever seen the devil. So you've got 12 cars all together, one of which you play as, which is the FA Racing, which is the red car. That's your standard car, and that's the car you play throughout the game. It's uh, interesting to see it's red, just like the Ferrari from Outrun and all, so I wonder if they've... Yeah. They're definitely looking at Outrun. Even though they're not identical types of games, um, one being a race, like one being more of a track racing game, or one just being like a more like cannonball running it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so you have this playable car. That's all you've got. Uh, you can't upgrade everything. That keeps things very simple. Remember, it came out in 1993 as well. The game only has one main track. Now, for the uh, this track is split into four different types of courses. Initially, three really, but there is well, well, we'll say four courses. It's there's four different difficulties. Yeah, but the actual uh, the actual game itself has it's two effectively variations, two yeah. variations of, of the course. Uh, you've got an easy and an, well a beginner and an intermediate mode, which are actually one version of the track. I mean, the the two versions of the track apparently are identical. You get an extra lap on the uh, intermediate. Yeah, so be, it, I think the arcade as well as the PlayStation, uh, what's called a beginner, that's two laps. Um, yeah. Then intermediate or mid level on the PlayStation, that's three laps. Yeah. Um, and your cars are faster as well. So ah, you, I you get a bit was, extra yeah. speed yeah. in your cars. And there's a is it called professional or hard on the hard mode? Um I advanced. Think in the arcade, I think it's advanced. Advanced, yeah. Yeah. Um and that's that's when you get the extra little bit of track. Yeah, that it adds but, an extra piece onto that track. So yeah, which is it, just a pain in the arcade. It's the same base there. track, but it adds an extra extra segment on there. And this this Advanced track is also used for a time trial, which you can play. So effectively, four different uh, difficulties. But um, that's enough about the base gameplay of the arcade machine. But I do have to touch on something else, which is a little bit negative. Now, back in 1993, Ridge Racer would have cost one pound to play. Now, I mean, if you're playing the game in an actual cabinet itself, yeah, you take an experience of the cabinet. I mean, it's almost a ride as well. So you can you can work with that basically. I mean, I mean, 1993 a quid was quite a lot still. You know, back when we're still playing games, it cost ten or twenty pence. Even. Yeah. Uh, some 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 games ten pence, but mostly twenty by then. But still, 
Um, and uh, in and of itself, a one pound to play that game until you run out of time and failed on a race is more than fair. But Ridge Racer didn't work like that. What Ridge Racer did was you would pay one pound to play a track. Yeah. So, I mean, if you ran out of time, you would like effectively lose, which means you have to put more money into to race again. Or if you beat the game, you were greeted with a game over, which I always felt so like crushing to think yeah. like you've just co t effectively completed the game in a way because that's that's your game, that's the game you've played for. So if you've played for uh, a race around the uh, beginner track, and you probably will complete the beginning track, so it's quite easy, then that's your game over as opposed to then moving on to the intermediate track. Now, mind, mind you, though, Sega was the same with Daytona mm. and Virtual Racing. However, Sega Rally, which came out around a similar time as well, Slightly after you, that. if you finished the race, um, you would go on to the next track yeah. and you would be given an opportunity to continue which on. Which I think you should. I think you should always should yeah, have still. Until you ran out of time. Or you completed the game first, you know. I mean, you said my own opinion there. I mean, without doing like a full-on review of Ridge Race Arcade, because it wouldn't be fair to say it's a bad game, it's a great game still. But that is a slightly, I still consider it a slightly miserly sort of feature, which, as Mark just says, though, was used anyway by its uh, its contemporaries, you know. So you could, you can understand where they're coming from at the time, plus the price of these cabinets, I know for a fact, was astronomical. I oh, mean, yeah. the price of a regular two-player fighting game at the time um, was no more than about $5,000. Uh, sometimes pounds or three and a half thousand pounds depending on where it came. But you could you could throw a figure. I've checked this out as well. In five grand, which I mean, it's still a lot of money, but it's not that much when you think if you pay that five grand for a cab, and there's people and it's fifty pence a shot maybe at the time, and people are playing it every day, like maybe hundreds of people. You're going to make that money back after maybe just a couple of weeks, and then the profit starts rolling. So if uh, if something like Ridge Racer was like you know ten times that much, then um, yeah, you can see where they want to keep the credit rolling. In. So Basically, if you wanted to do a full playthrough of Ridge Racer and you were a very good player, you're going to pay four quid, yeah. you know, to complete all four tracks. So, you know, like I said, it's still quite an expensive playthrough, but I've always, we've, well, we've always liked to like, look at it from the uh, arcade operator's si uh, side of the of the coin as well and understand why, why you know, why costs are what they are and why a game might be charged, uh, the, the, the cost that it's, that's, that's been charged for, you know. But... Um, but that's the way it was anyway uh, at the time. Um, let's see. I mean, to, in finishing, in, in finishing, when I'm talking about the arcade game, I think it might have been the start of the decline of the arcades. I mean, me and Mark do have a slightly different opinion on this, which we will get to at some point in the future because yeah. we've got a hell of a conversation to come up, which I'm really looking forward to actually. One day down the road, not just yet. Um, you know, and 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 to top it off as well, which Mark's about to talk about now. But when you do consider how amazing the PlayStation version turned out. And with its metric tons of extra content that was included, you can understand why maybe the arcades did start to decline in the early to mid nineties. You know, yeah. um, so I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's it's it, it's a it's a time in the past that we've all loved, and it's it's been and gone. And uh, it's sad to say something, but that's where it goes. And uh, that's me finished. That's me done. I think uh, I'm going to let uh, let Mark have a little chat about uh, the best version of Ridge Racer, which is. Uh, which race on the PlayStation? Oh, Over to you, mate. But yeah, you're right. The um, I think definitely around about that time, 1993, 1994, was when the <coughs> sorry when the arcades did start to decline. And Ridge Racer did definitely have a foothold in that for me. But I, st I think you nailed it on the head when you said that the bigger cabinet was all about the attraction. Yeah. So you would pay your pound, you would get in there, you would have your four minutes worth of racing if you were crap. Or less if you were even crapper. Um, I still think L1 was about 50 pence back in yeah. the day, back in the 80s, 86, yeah. 87. So that's about right, well, I think, you know, for the price. If, if you were good at it, the price. if you were good at it, you'd be finishing like the um, the ad advanced in, you know, like a minute and 10 seconds per lap. So you three and a half minutes and that's it. But it, um, it was, it was all about sitting in the cabinet, getting to, to have the clutch, do the drifts of the yeah. manual gear stick, everything like that, you know. It you felt like you're driving a car. Yeah, that, that's it. I must admit, mind, I think, in all honesty, I've probably played Ridge Racer in the arcade three or four times, if that, because I couldn't afford to pay a pound a time. Yeah, when that's I was where a, we thought you know, I... Back in the, in the mid-90s, yeah. and I had like three pound to go to the arcade with, there's no way I was spending one yeah. of my quid. And quids, like we've just said as well, a lot of games at that time, if you were going to play a beat them up or a fighting game, you'd still yeah. probably go pay 20 pence, weren't you? Well, that's it. I, you know? I could have five games well, on Double Dragon for, for yeah. the same price of a game on Ridge Racer. That would last us an hour and, and a half. If you hunted about, you still could sometimes see a 10 pence game, couldn't you? Yeah, exactly. So I think um, 
you know, that, that brings us nicely over to the PlayStation one and, and why, like Glenn said, it, it did contribute towards the decline in the arcade. And that being because it's just an absolutely fantastic conversion of the arcade game. Now, the, the PlayStation hardware is, is not up to the same standard as yeah, the Namco the System 22. 22 yeah. um, however, it is based around the, Nam the Sony PlayStation hardware anyway, the System 22 is. So a, a direct port was always going to be on the cards when the arcade game was being designed, in my opinion, and I'm sure we could clarify that somewhere. But um, it's, it's a fantastic game. There's been a few cuts to the graphics in, in, the, the, frames, in, the, yeah. in the frame rate, in the sense that it's now only running at 30 frames a second, where the arcade version runs at 60 frames per second. That and some of the, um, you know, the polygon models have been reduced in actual, um, you know, mesh textures and uh, meshes and stuff. Um, some of the textures have been downgraded, that kind of stuff. But you were still left with what looked like an absolutely outstanding conversion back on the days on a CRT t TV. Which is what we're all yeah. anyway, yeah. So you kind of, you fired it up and you didn't miss the better graphics of the arcade version no. because the gameplay was there. That's it, it soon as you got into it. Now, one of the things I, I, I really love about this as well, I remember the first day we fired this up, Glenn, because uh, like you said earlier, you got this as part of a, a set of games that you got when you first got your PlayStation. I still had like a Mega Drive or something at the time. And I remember Glenn getting his PlayStation out that he just bought, setting it up, and I'll, I'll have been badging him to play Ridge Racer because I'd seen it. I don't think I'd actually played it myself at the time, but I'd seen a couple of my friends play it and stuff, you know. And I really wanted to play it because it, it was my kind of game. I love racing games. Um, and anyway, I remember the loading screen. Yes, definitely <laughs> going to mention this. Like was, this, Do you know what this, before well, you say any more, Mark, though, I don't know about you, but this for me is... I don't know, but I think it's a throwback to the 80s Commodore 64 games. I was about Master to say, Tronic, I've got with Invader yeah. loading that, you know. I've got it written right. down here. It's Aye. not the first time that that's happened in a game. Yeah. And I've actually got it's a great. question. Great. What was it again? Because I remember... What, the first game? I yeah, remember. I remember. Right. Did, yeah, that we play, it was back in the C64 Well, that's years. what I'm saying. I played about three different games. Now, there was a game that played a bit like Grid Runner, and I can't remember its name. The tunes were fantastic because it was done by Rob Hubbard. Ah, you always yes, remember the right. music from Rob Hubbard, but Invader Lord is the one that I always remember the most, and that was on a load of old Master Tronic games. And in some cases, oh. and there's jokes made about this a while ago, there's some games, right? So some full price Master Tronic games, not budget prices for one ninety nine, some full price nine ninety nine Master Tronic games that had Invader Lord or one of the other mini games on the on the the loading section that was better than the final product. Yeah, absolutely. better than the ten, and people were just loading in the game. Right, I know this. I've read this. And I talked to people about it in school days who would stop the tape just so they could play it in Vader Lord. <laughs> because if you stop the tape, it just you could play it forever. I get and they would it, die. Yeah. And this this game loaded with about thirty seconds, so you paid ten pound to play in Vader Lord. I mean, uh, obviously it's good to say that Ridge Race is way better than. Galaxy, and I mean, depending on how old you are, you might even disagree. But um, <laughs> but it's a great version of Galaxy, isn't it? That comes. That, that's it is. It, it, it's, it's just one wave of enemies. But if you get them all, it's important. Yeah. Yeah. If you get them all, you unlock the um, perfect mode. Essentially, you get a perfect little uh, pop up comes up, and basically it unlocks um, an additional eight cars. Doesn't yeah, it? which is class. Um, so Bear in mind you start with four extra cars as well. Yeah. Uh, so, four so, cars. So we'll we'll roll back there to to. You know, we've jumped ahead of ourselves with the perfect bit, but yeah. So, the port to the PlayStation, like I said, frame rate is reduced by half. Some of the graphics are dumbed down and everything. The music is all still there. That's perfect. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, now, red to audio yeah. instead of the, uh, you know, the, the actual hardware on the jammer board being yeah. used. To so, if you haven't already ripped it, rip it and play it in your car. Oh, honestly. yeah, good eye. Um, but, um, yeah, so, so essentially, you start the game with the... Beginner mode, the mid level, the advanced le high level, sorry, and the time trial modes open to play. Um, you also start with four base cars, which uh, yeah, three I of them are new, yeah. uh, well, new, but the, the they were originally unplayable, weren't they, in the arcade games? Yeah, so you've got your right. FA racing and three more new, yeah, new so cars. You, you've got a, you've got a, a yellow Solvalu, isn't it, as well? Yeah, you've got a blue and yellow Solvalu open. We won't go into all the cars, just one I don't remember all the names. Yeah, the stats as well. And you've also got a car that's a little bit easier for, for handling through the drifts as well. Remember which the Pink is, Mabby. Yeah, hi, Pink Mabby, which is probably a good car to start with, it's the second choice. But then, um, 
you go straight into like the beginner mode and such. I mean, there's no, there's nothing really in the in the way of um, saving and loading other than like your um, your, your time records on your on laps. Aren't all four tracks open though? Can you play? Yeah, any, so yeah, you all play. four tracks yeah. open at the start. You can also choose between automatic and manual. Yes, which, I'll yeah, be honest, right. I don't think I've ever played in manual mode. On I'm auto only. Yeah, yeah. You can choose your your track, uh, your music track, straight mm -hmm. out of the bat, and then you basically start your race. There's an odd uh, factor out one. Hi, yeah, aye. Uh, yeah. So th the the premise is simple. You'll do your laps. You know, two for the beginner mode, three for every other mode. You'll finish the race, and then you'll get a little winner's badge over the top of that race, and you can still play the race again. But it just highlights the fact that you've beaten that yeah, race. Yeah, you don't have to go back. Now, once you beat it's all four races, um, including the time trial, which is the last one, you then get what is essentially a... Bonus game? Well, you get a game over, which is a, you've finished the game. Basically, you get a different music. You get a different replay. Credits. You also get to put your name in as well mm -hmm. um, for like a high score, essentially. But then you after that you've unlocked the the mirror tracks, which are, are called the extra tracks. So you get to do every track in reverse, and mind you, it's it's much harder. And when I say in reverse, I don't mean you're reversing; mm. it's mirrored the tracks, obviously. Although you can reverse, up the you track can you want, but... uh, actually you can't reverse <laughs> in which race. Sure, sure you can. Yeah, there's no reverse. Isn't it? Not in the PlayStation One anyway. Oh God, uh, oh, what? Not that I'm aware of. I've never tried it, mind. But I don't there was a challenge for them. Um, <laughs> So yeah, you, once you finish all four extra tracks, which is a challenge, um, then you basically unlock the devil, assuming you beat, well, you will have beaten the devil car. The ultimate in, car. In the time trial, the extra time trial. Now, in that one, you instead of just facing the yellow solvaloo, which is what you do in the normal time trial, you'll face the devil car as well, which you'll pass in the first lap. Now, if you can stay in front of it, um, you'll unlock that car. So basically, if you come first and win, you've now unlocked the 13th car, which is the devil car. And this devil car is, you know, all the specs are fully maxed out on this car. You it's feel like, you've achieved something in all yeah, when you de get that. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. It's, in my opinion, it's actually really difficult to handle that car because it's just too twitchy. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, my, my favourite car is probably either the original Red, the red one that you start racing, out with, yeah. the FA Racing, or the second one, which is the Dynamic Drift. Well, the FA was balanced anyway, when it was classed as the balanced car. Yeah. I mean, but that, that was something else. And all you wouldn't even know in the arcade game that you were driving. This red car, apart from in the like interludes and sort of technically the cut, not exactly cut scenes, but when a race has been complete in that way, obviously with the PlayStation version, another little bonus that we'll get is a, an extra view, as in you're given. Uh, an out of the car view now, like a you know what, what do we call that again? Right? It's not a bird's eye view, external but it's view, yeah, an external, external view, camera. you know. So you get your you get your uh, bumper cam as they call it, yeah. Bumper cam uh, although I've always just considered it in car, even I just do, even though it's not truly that. And, and as I say, an additional external view now, where you actually get to see the car you're driving, which uh, yeah, the, it's mind nice you, to the, say that you know. The external view, I mean, I, I can't play in. That. I don't, no, I, I don't. Play I, play in that internal, mode. I just can't control drifts. Yeah, but, um, and I different. mean. The, the the thing is, you know, one other thing, one other difference that I like about the PlayStation One, they've they've done a lot of tuning on the joypad handling so that you can use the D-pad uh, efficiently yeah, for, for the drifts. Now in the arcade, when you're coming into a corner and you initiate a drift either by letting off the accelerator or you know tapping the brake, it, you seem to drift more realistically, I'd say, but you know, realistically for a 1993 arcade game physics, but it's you can't kind of line up your drift as easy as you would in the PlayStation, where in the PlayStation version, you'll tap to initiate your drift. And if you're good, you can snap it back perfectly in the center after your corner, and you get a little kind of boost to your speed. It's not a turbo boost or anything like that, but it's, it's just it's kind of like an acknowledgement from the game. You've done that drift perfectly. You now, you've, not, you've lost no speed coming out of yeah, that corner, basically. Yeah, just a basically. bonus, isn't it? Yeah, where if you're... If you spend too much time trying to straighten your car up after the drift, you do, you see like a noticeable drop in your speed coming out of that corner. So it's just the fine tune that they've put in, for me, makes the PlayStation game more playable than the arcade game. Um, and I, I've played the arcade game several times on this. Is, this I agree with this because said again, and it's just another little nail in the coffin for the arcade version. Yeah. Well, it? I mean, it's, it's lovely to have like the analog steering and stuff, right? Because you, you just you feel like you've got a bit more control naturally but in the drifts the playstation version just feels much snappier and responsive for some reason um and yeah i, I haven't spent enough time with the arcade version 
to maybe appreciate what, what it offers through the drifts and that. But I have, personally, I haven't got the facilities to set up a clutch and everything at home to play on me. And it's, and it's not going to feel the same anyway. It, if it you looks really, like a pain in the arse to That's do. the thing. I mean, if you're going to talk about the arcade game more, you really want to be able to test it out in a cabinet Aye. environment. And believe and me, mind, if I came across one of them cabinets, I have it here right now with us in the garage. Yeah, I think we'll have to. I'd be, I'd be on it all the bloody time. Well, I got bored of it anyway. since you mentioned it now, I look at the prices of cabinets. Well, I've seen a Ridge Racer cabinet for 500 quid, which Aye. I think is great. Yeah. That's really good. I mean, the thing was, it was called fully working. I mean, whether it had a few little uh, glitches or little problems in there, but even if it just had a few uh, little technical issues, you know, for 500 quid, and it looked nice, the cabinet was in good condi good cosmetic condition, I'd be like, well, for 500 quid, that's that's not too bad, you know? If I think and you, could turn, you could flip that in the future if you ever wanted to. If I had to choose one arcade, I say racing game, so the genre racing game cabinet that I could have, it would probably be Ridge Racer. It would be the triple monitor version. I think. Oh, I'd be happy with the standard deluxe. I'd, be I'd happy have with to the have the triple deluxe. monitor. I don't, I say, I've never seen a triple monitor, and that'll probably be, I bet you that's about three times the price oh, of the standard God, deluxe, yes. just because it's probably so rare. Where the, I mean, they'll all be rare now, even the standard standard stand-up version will be rare now, and that'll probably be, probably, probably be about the same price as the deluxe. The thing is about the, the thing is about cabinet size as well. For some people, uh, obviously you've got to have a very specialist environment to put these in. Yeah. So, the prices sometimes come down on the deluxe versions of games because nobody can physically keep them. I mean, it's bad enough keeping a regular sort of jammer cabinet for some. I mean, you know, me personally, I don't have a garage, so I'd still struggle at the moment to get a cabinet in my house, in my flat. Plus, I have my flat is upstairs, so I'd struggle with that. Well, um, speaking about cabinet sizes and, and stuff like that, and you know, specific to an arcade, why don't you tell us a bit about that the attraction one for the arcade that you were going to? Oh Christ, yes, right. Well, I'm pleased that this. Well, since we're, we're talking, this, I'm going to talk about a few versions, and I'm going to keep the full scale as it's called to the last. But I'll just gloss over these few versions. It's just me and Mark have both got a few. I'm going to touch on a few different versions of the original Ridge Racer, and I am I am now, I've just found out today, <laughs> going to touch on a version of Ridge Racer Re Revolution, technically, in the arcade. Yeah. Uh, but I will, because I've put it on my list, and Mark's going to have a, chat, a quick chat about a few other versions. Not yeah, all. The, the, main, the mainline yeah, console but, versions, you know. What we're doing is, I mean, we're, we're picking and choosing a little bit, I know, but we're picking games that we either played, either were played in the series, or a sort of... Uh, relevant to the Ridge Racer 1 articles. P played enough to have a valid opinion on. I to to say, some degree. Yeah. Like I say, one of these games I'm going to mention anyway because I actually, going by the research I'd done, because I knew nothing about it, I'll be honest, this game, um, I thought it was actually a version of Ridge Racer 1. It's called Pocket Racer anyway. Now, this game is still on the System 22 hardware, so by the time it came out, quite sort of obsolete in a way. I mean, it came out in 1997. Now, if you, if you check this game out, uh, either on the cabinet itself or... On a ROM, it has the date of 1996, but I've been assured by several sources that it did actually come out in early, around about March, I think it was, March of 97, which um, is quite late, but I thought it was a version of Ridge Racer 1. I've only had a few videos to look at. Yeah, so I've only a few on YouTube, deal, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's very, uh, it's uncommon game, very. Um, but uh, to me, delight, really, because Ridge Racer Revolution never made it in the arcade uh, in its natural form. So this game appears... Track-wise, to be more based on that. Now, I don't know about cars, but it, it's called Potter Racer because it, apparently it's aimed more at children. So I'm going to assume, for the moment, I could be wrong, but I'm going to assume for the moment that the game is possibly a little bit easier to play. Maybe it's a bit slower or you get a lot more time. Um, but it, it actually, what it gives you, and this is the big link to Ridge Racer Revolution, is it gives you the super deformed sort of Choro Q size cars where yeah. they've got big wheels and little bodies and that so it looks cool but there's an option there as well to turn the cars back into their normal Ridge, Ridge Racer Revolution or Ridge Racer style so it appears to have the same cars as, as those two games because I mean Ridge Racer Revolution's got almost the exact same roster apart from a couple of extra secrets that we might get to in the future I think it's taken the music as well from Ridge Racer it, it, it is, it, 2 or also Ridge Racer Revolution well they use a lot of those same tunes between those yeah. three games didn't they? Ridge yeah. 1, Rev, Rev and Two, the youth. That's why in Ridge Racer Two. Well, isn't Ridge Racer Two actually just the tracks of Ridge Racer One as well, but in, with the two play, uh, two cabinet? Yeah, and, cabinet. and updated music. Aye. It's the music that you so see I knew because I remember Revolution. people. In fact, I think that was the whole reason why Ridge Racer Revolution was created because Ridge Two was not enough of a big step over Ridge One apart from the twin cabinet to be a new game. So um, one of the things I was going to touch on as well, but since you've mentioned it, Ridge Racer Revolution actually had a two player mode. 
but it was console link. It would be linked. So you could, yeah, you it would be linked. Link, oh, yeah. that's right. I which thought it, it did mine. Which was the same as the arcade, because in theory they are linked that's the same it, way. Yeah, that's all so it is. Network right. link, yeah. and, I mean, I know the link cable was quite rare. Not many people had that, but at least the options there, you know. Yeah. And to be fair, because the PS1 was such a big console, if there was two blokes living together, I call them blokes, you probably only about 11 at the time. If two kids were living together, uh, you know, our mother and father there, two brothers living in the same bedroom, maybe good chance, or you'd probably have a PlayStation each. So... I would say the link cable probably wasn't the most irrelevant peripheral ever created for the PS1. Yeah. Because at least, you know, if you bought this thing, you probably did have two PlayStation in the house. You, you may have done. It would have had some, uh, it would have been useful. But anyway, that's that's a quick chat about Potter Racer. Another uh, Ridge Racer 1 variant is called Turbo. And that comes built in as part of the Ridge Racer 4 um, package, which is a really nice little uh, addition, really. It's called the high spec mode, isn't it? In Europe? Yeah, uh, that's, uh, it's got a couple of names of ours, and it comes on a separate disc, if I'm, if I'm correct. Or it not. did, yeah. And uh, I've looked, I haven't played this, but I shouldn't need to because it, it is Ridge Racer 1. But the nice thing is, it's um, there's a few historical fac factoids that you see before the game even starts talking about the game, and you can tell whoever's written these. It's only written stuff, it's not. Uh, not CG or FMVs or anything like that. It's just some written text. But it's like a nice introduction to what the disc is and to what you get on the disc. And they're talking about the history of Ridge Racer, including the whole series up until that point, which was, say, was Ridge Racer Type 4 that came out in 98 in Japan and 99 in the rest of the world. So, um, But it, it, it comes with at least a couple of different versions and it comes with the very original PlayStation version uh, at 30 frames per second. And you've also got an arcade mode that comes with uh, 60 frames per second. Looking at the... Looking at the games on the disc, um, I think they're based on the PlayStation version fully, just you get to play the PlayStation version with 60 frames and a higher, in yeah. a higher res resolution. So it looks like you're playing the arcade game, but with the uh, the PS1 features, which means technically Ridge Racer Turbo 60 frame version is probably the best best version of Ridge Racer ever. Um, in theory, yeah, definitely. Because yeah. taking the, feature, the best features of both versions. That's me. I, I, there is, uh, to finish off with, without talk, before I talk about the full-scale version, there has been a couple of mobile games out there, a couple of cell phone games. Uh, and I haven't seen them, and I haven't got any information on them. I did look. Um, I'm assuming they're probably quite good because, you know, uh, if, if this had came out around about the Symbian era, you know, like when we spoke about Street Rage 1's uh, mobile phone version last time, which I thought was excellent, uh, quite possibly the, the, the versions would have been fairly good. There might have been Pixel... Uh, more pixel art as opposed to uh, polygons, but I haven't seen them, so I can't really confirm anything. But I don't even ever remember seeing them on like the Play Store uh, or no, Apple Store mean, so or anything. They might have been obscure or just locked to one, locked to Japan possibly, or maybe in Korea or something. Yeah. So uh, we haven't seen yeah. them, so I'll I'll not uh, say any more on them. But the full scale version, um, which as we discussed earlier, is not really an arcade cabinet. It's more of an attraction. In fact, a good comparison. Thought I'd bring this up now because you'll know this. Is another Namco game is Galaxy and Three, um, which again is another massive environment scale game where you've got up to eight players. This is Galaxy and Three, definitely worth looking at if you don't know. Yeah, I don't know it. Galaxy and Three players like Starblade, which you'll know Starblade. Right. Yes. Uh, think of Starblade, but with eight it's like players. Starwing. Right? Star. I very much yeah, because I've, I've watched some uh, Star Fox. If you're not in the UK. Yes, or definitely. I, yeah, because an English game called Star Fox, which uh, was a lot of trouble over. Um, but it is a Galaxy and Three is an environment scale game, um, and I believe that came out slightly before Ridge Racer anywhere. So that might have been the start of this. It, it, it basically what you get with these two games is it's it's got to be a massive environment that you're playing them in. So you're not talking about a regular arcade. You could not get these in here. It has to be like a massive player centre. Generally speaking, it'd be like Namco World had one, and uh, but close to home there was a one of these. Uh, Ridge Racer cabinet, a Ridge Racer setups in Blackpool Pleasure Beach, uh, Beach. So obviously, if you you know you live in England, that was here, and you might have played that at some point. I vaguely remember possibly seeing it myself, although I might be just imagining that because I would have loved to have seen it. Uh, just as well on a side note regarding that, uh, anyone who's now like backsides are going that this cab, this this machine, this setup has gone completely. It's not. It's being uh, preserved, and there is a mystery collector I think in the UK who's pretty much taken the whole of the environment, the whole of the attraction, and managed to keep and preserve it somewhere. So it, it, I don't know if it's set up to play anywhere in the country, but it's definitely at least it, it's, it's at least gathering dust in a, um, in a massive lot up somewhere. But he's managed to take the main unit, which, by the way, the, the, the big draw of uh, Ridge Racer Full Scale is that you're actually, you're actually sitting in a Mazda X5, MX-5. 
Yeah, or yeah. Mazda Yunos roads. Yunos roads, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's got the two names now, depending on where you're from. It's the Yunos roads of the Japanese name, isn't it? I believe it is, yes. Yeah, that's yeah. I thought it was. And the great thing is, this is not this is not a fiberglass replica. I mean, even with Ridge Racer, um, the Deluxe Cab, I mean, you're driving a small fiberglass re replica, which is still massive. I mean, you put this thing in the garage and it's going to be taking up a good half of the garage, you know? I said garage. Um, <laughs> um, but it's uh, because yeah, it is an actual car being converted to work um, to play this game. So there's a few extra features. You've got a horn and that, and you've got wind blowing in your face from um, from a mechanism that does that, and it's getting played on massive screens. Uh, and uh, the other thing as well, I mean, the game is Ridge Racer 1, so you don't get extra tracks or any of the features from the PlayStation version, but the car that you're driving, when you do see it on screen, it is actually the Mazda MX-5 model and not the FA Racing. So only a small touch, really, and not a massive deal, but it's nice to see that they took the time out to change the model. Um, the uh, the other great thing about this as well is that it's... Um, <laughs> and this is the final the final little, uh, little, <laughs> little nugget of info, because it's quite cool, is there was a Japanese setup, which I think came from the Namco... Uh, the Namco Play Center I, I mentioned earlier in Japan, and uh, what's happened is it's good and bad. They, they deconstructed the whole of the the attraction, so a lot of it was scrapped. But the car was turned back into a working, running Unus Unos, or how you pronounce it, Roadster. Yeah. So that car, that car is probably or possibly, if it's still running, still out there somewhere. So I'd like to hope, I'd really love to hope, right, that you know, the car is a 20-odd-year-old car, you know what I mean, still. So if that car is no longer running, that whoever owns it at least had the good sense to donate it to, to someone who would know what it actually is so they can convert it back. So in the very least, they've got the original machine from the cabinet, from the setup, and then they could maybe just... Because the ROMs exist, the ROMs do exist for uh, Ridge Racer full scale. So it, it wouldn't be that hard to make a mock up of what was original, the original attraction, but using at least the original car, which to me is the next best thing to having that full setup. So the thing is, though, like you say, when they've took that car and they've, um, they've, they've transformed it basically into a proper car, they, they've known what they've done there because at the end of the day, it was just a body. Yeah, that's all. It's just a shell, I Yeah, with, uh, so, so you, you've had to spend an awful amount of money to, or turn, yeah. transfer that body to a Unos Roadster. Um, but theoretically, you know, knowing that you're going to preserve this whole thing. It, it, is, it is an official shell, so it's not a replica shell. So yeah. it, obviously, yeah, it would never have had the original engine put there and, there and how, how, anything that would make it a roadworthy car. Yeah. You know, I probably didn't even have work on wheels. I would be surprised no, the wheels were just like yeah. glued on, technically, you know. But you have a shell there that you could go back and say, right. As long as we've got everything else that we need for the car, we can turn it into a car. So it's not like they're basically like having to turn a model into a car, you know? Yeah. They're turning a car shell back into a working car. But I know what you're saying, though. The, those people would, I would like to hope that they, they knew, obviously they knew exactly what they were doing, but they've let everyone else know that they were doing and all. Yeah. So that car, if it's seen on the road or if it, if it was seen on the road at the time, people who, who were relevant to that would at least know what it actually is. So, because I said, as far as preservation going, the talk I've heard is that the, the Japanese one and the one in Blackpool in UK are the two last uh, Ridge Racer full-scale attractions, like cabinet attractions, so there's no more left in the world. I mean, it, it always was going to be a limited thing. This thing's never going to be viable like 30 years later, you know. I mean, it, it, it's still an old game, you know, running on a, on a system that's just too big to be viable, you know. I mean, why would you have a, a setup, which bear in mind, I don't know how much this was to play, but I'll bet me way more than a pound. So if, if the Ridge Racer Deluxe cost £1, this probably costs like 5 or something, you know. Bear in mind, it's, it's a ride more than else. So it just wouldn't be viable in this day and age, apart from an extremely hardcore collector yeah. with a lot of space. Basically, it was a hanger. <laughs> I would love to have seen it, but I would, I'd have been too tight to pay for a go on it. I, I think I would have played it one time just to say I'd experienced it because no matter how much it was, as long as it wasn't absolutely extreme, but, it'll, um, it'll have been like five pound a go. Aye, I would have said well, so. At the very I, least, two pound a go. Yeah, maybe at least I, the very least, I think. But I would have definitely given it a shot just one time, just to experience the whole thing, you know. Uh, but I said again, it's been and gone. But obviously, the good news being that it is at least preserved to some degree. So that's nice to to see. I see, Mark. I think uh, I'll throw back to you actually and yeah. see what you, yeah, what well, your thoughts are on a few of the games. Before the before I touch on some of the other the mainstream uh, Ridge Racer games in the series, because this is. This episode's predominantly around the PlayStation 1 Ridge Racer, although so far you wouldn't think so. 
what, what we want to do, or what I would like to do at this point, is just remind everyone that, that Ridge Racer was actually one of the launch games on the PlayStation. Yeah, it in was, Europe. yeah. A fantastic way to launch now, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, now in Europe, we only seen nine launch games, and I've got a list of them here. I'm going to very quickly touch on them. Um, so there was 3D Lemmings. That should need no explanation. There was Air Combat, yeah. which eventually Namco became, again, yeah, eventually became yeah, um, yeah, what's it? it Ace Combat, Ace yeah, Combat it, series, yeah. Which, well, that's the American name for it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Ace Combat? That's right, aye. Yeah, and they, they're still going today. Yep. Um, again, I say another Namco big, a big series, you know. Battle Arena Toshinden, which yeah, that was the first fighting game, like, yeah. Yeah. The that's... thing about Toshinden, just a quick word about Toshinden. I mean, it got completely overshadowed by Tekken One and obviously Virtual Fighter on Saturn, but Toshinden did start. Something and it was very well received at the time, mind. It's I weird remember, with, yeah, with Tosh like Inden. Well, that's it. That's the weird thing with Tosh Inden was I think people were just so happy to have a three D fighting game on their PS One, the brand new PS One. Yeah. So they had a competitor of VF, obviously on um, on Saturn. Saturn yeah. So uh, it wasn't great, and some people. I think the sad thing is now I, I always like to try and give every game a little bit of uh, praise where possible. You know, I'm looking at you guys. Um, <laughs> it's the thing about it is is it's it's just not aged well as again say the Tekken games, which obviously started very very shortly after. So it's um, it's just it's just, it's still got quite long legs as well. I mean, there's quite a few Tosh Indian games out there, but it is sad to see how greatly it was received at the time. And now, like thirty years later, or twenty five years or so later, it's like absolutely despised by many, you know. But yeah. its combat systems did start it did start something off which some other fighting games didn't have. I mean, it's the first fully three D fighting game and all. Where you've got actually rolling and, and moving in and out the scenery, Virtual Fighter didn't do that, you know. So it, it's still a pioneer. So as much as it's generally forgotten or even sort of like not really respected now, it still was a decent launch game for the time for the PS One. There was um, there was Jumping Flash, yeah. which was like a, a basically a 3D, robot rabbit. Yeah, three D platform. Very well seen. Attempt. There was Kalik the Blood, which mm -hmm. I don't even know what that is if I'm honest. It's a shooter. Was it? Yeah. Right. First person shooter, if I remember. Right. Yeah. And that got mixed that, to good. That, that got mixed to good reviews. So it still wasn't like a bad game. You know, it wasn't considered a bad game. It just it just sort of like it ended up um, getting swamped by all the weird bad games, which you've mentioned at least a couple of them. So there was uh, there was Nova Storm, which was a port of a Mega CD and 3D game. That's right. Yeah, which right. was just a. It was like a uh, on real shooter, space shooter on real like backgrounds. like Starblade yeah. that we've just mentioned. Right? Yeah, yeah. There was a game called Rapid Reload, which is. Like a Metal Slug type game. I, 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 I remember that. the name, but I can't remember what that game looked like. I'll have to have a look at it. Yeah, it was a basic run and gun game. Ah. Then then there was Ridge Racer, mm -hmm. and then there was Wipeout. And uh, basically, I mean, look, out of Ridge Racer and Wipeout, I, I love the idea of Wipeout, but it's just not my cup of tea. I think um, what Wipeout had a very different vibe. British, yeah. yeah. I think we'll always have a soft spot for Wipeout because of the British connection. Yeah. But the good thing as well with these two racing games is they're very different types of style. I mean, you've obviously got your more realistic cars, which would definitely have uh, appealed to car, car, uh, to petal heads, you know? Heads, yeah. To, you know, where obviously Wipeout would be, might, you might have been more of a, um, uh, F Zero fan, you know. Yeah, yeah, so well, that's it. Different and style of white, racing white game. Might have scratched so that itch, you yeah. could easily have these two great racing games side by side with two different styles from two different development houses in different countries, different cultures, and then. But you could still go and read, we love this game, but some people, some people love this game as well, you know. Now, for me, all day long, out of that launch lineup, Ridge Racer. Yeah, definitely, without doubt. It's uh, even. I think even if I didn't know what Ridge Racer was, and I was in the shop looking through those nine games when I was picking up my PlayStation for the first time, which was you, by the way, not me. But I, I think every box I turned over, I would have picked Ridge Racer up more than once and eventually took that one to the till with us because that game, for me, just looks the best and it plays the best. And, you know, it just it, it really attracted me. Anyway. It's, a, it's, a, it's such a, as well, it's a loud and exciting game. So yeah. if you had a, a CRT in a, in a Curry's at the time, that's a shop, that's one of our electrical shops Curry's. we had in the UK, <laughs> Curry's, we would call that. Right? And so they were selling all those consoles. I mean, I remember Jaguars and 3 ds in there as well. No one touching them, but you'd have a PS1 connected and a Saturn. People would be playing Daytona and Saturn yeah, still. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the Saturn still. Um, but Ridge Racer would be on and people would be just crowded around this. Like, even just watching it play, if, if it wasn't even like there wasn't a controller plugged in, there'd be people still just crowding around just watching what was going on on a 14 or 16 inch CRT, you know, which is great, man. So, just to um, just to touch on some of the other mainstream versions that we've got. So, 
the Ridge Racer obviously released back in 1994 on the original PlayStation. Um, as we've already talked about a bit, what a fantastic game. Loved it. Still do. Really enjoy playing the field again this week, unlocking everything, including the Devil Car. Fantastic game. I just love to come back to. Um, then, shortly after, in 1995, we got Ridge Racer Revolution, which was basically, it was just Ridge Racer, the game, the engine, everything. They created a new track for it. Again, you had four four difficulties to play that yeah. track on with the same kind of a little bit extra tacked onto the track. It's a good the, sequel, I think. It's quite a good sequel. You've got to remember didn't something. didn't like the track as much. I honest. didn't know. I prefer the original track. But um, one thing I found with sequels in the 90s, um, and I think the, stre- the trend might have started with Street Fighter 2, you know. But, I mean, okay, Super St- uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Champion weren't technically called sequels. But what you'd do is you'd get an upgrade you know, and it would just give you a small amount of extra features, just a little bit. And then the sometimes called a sequel, or they might just call it a new edition, but it's technically a sequel, you know. But yeah. I think they could get away. Capcom was guilty of it, definitely. But they'd get away with just giving you a little bit extra for a bit more money. I mean, obviously, as games development was starting to cost more, uh, I could see where they'd come from with trying to make squeeze as much as they can out of a new edition. So, I mean, I thought Ridge Racer Revolution as a sequel was a decent one. Okay, I agree with Mark and say, yeah, I don't think the track's as good either. Um, but they tried, you know, and the game is still good and I had a great time with it. Uh, and you've got a couple of extra features and just a couple of extra new cars and things. So it doesn't give you an enormous amount of new content, but it does give you enough content to say, right, I've got Ridge Racer 1, but I want Revolution as well. Yeah. Because as discussed previously as well, uh, Revolution is, is it's, well, it's technically exclusive to PlayStation, although I said we've got a sort of, arcade conversion which is not exactly the arcade conversion but it's got there's it there's there's some similarities between the two but around about when ridge racer revolution came out uh ridge racer 2 came out in the arcade and that was based more heavily on ridge racer 1 so um as revolution goes it was it was a good home sequel i think well Re- revolution took the music from ridge racer 2 as well yeah um now the next game in the series really was rage racer but i've only played a little bit of Rage Racer, back with a good friend of mine, Earl Belshaw, in the day when it first came out. And I'll, I'll be honest, I never really took to it. I think the, the biggest put-off for me was the, the um, drift noise. Just sounded like a cat being shot or, and fed through a pasta uh, maker or something like that. It just sounded absolutely horrendous. It put me right off, and it didn't feel like a Ridge Racer game either. Um, the next mainstream game was Ridge Racer Type 4, and criminally... I haven't actually played much of this game either, although I know it's regarded as probably the best in the series by a lot of people. Now, for what I have played of it, I think it, it feels very satisfying to play. feels very tight. There's like 400 cars or something in the game. It's, it's got the Pac-Man car. Yeah, you know, the, the Pac-Man, Pac-Man ghosts yeah. are driving their own cars. Know. You know, it was cool. No, I loved it. Um, all four of the ghosts have, each of the cars has a sort of feature. Like one of them, he's, he's slow, right? He's slow as fuck, one of them. Yeah, I think it might be Clyde. Because they're all based right. on the real world, yeah, right? Yeah. But his car, you lap him every time. But he's got smoke billowing out the back constantly. So he's more of an obstacle on the track. And one of them's super fast and that. And one of them's squirrely, squirrely as fuck and that, you know. And it's like, you know, so you know, knock these four, um, these four, which which are basically Ridge Racer 4's devil cars. Because yeah. uh, Ridge Racer's got one set of devil cars now, which are extremely cool, actually. So uh, maybe one day for the future, but at the minute. But it, they did... The, the newer sequels did change up a lot, wherein, like, Revolution was... I mean, they kept the models of the first game and, obviously, of Ridge 2 and that, you know. Uh, Rage Racer and, and Type 4 did yeah, change well, things R- up quite Rage a lot. Rage Racer, did, it did, there was a new graphics engine, new game engine, everything like that. So, like I say, it never gelled with me. Um, type 4, I think, probably took what the Rage Racer, Rage Racer engine was and built on that. And delivered a game that, in my opinion, was far better than Rage Racer. Yeah, a lot but of meat on us. I still loved Ridge Racer 1 more than Ridge Racer Type 4. Maybe because I just never put enough time into Type 4. Um, I will go back eventually and play some more of that game, definitely. Next up in line was Ridge Racer 5, which came out in 2000 yeah. on the PlayStation. I think it was a launch game. If I, remember I believe right, it was PS2, it? yeah. Um, again... I didn't put a lot of time into this, and the reason maybe being, I haven't it. I, I didn't well. enjoy the music. Uh, it wasn't my cup of tea. It was more like house, like garage type stuff and whatnot. And although the game seemed to play fine, and the graphics were, were more than adequate for a PlayStation launch title, and that, it just I never really bonded with that one. Um, 
near near that same time they, they were actually releasing Ridge Racer 64 as well um, which i've had no time with i've never touched 64 at all yeah i know well, it's a different game from ridge one it's its own thing as far as i know uh, but i don't it, w w so what is that close to any other version then yeah uh, is that based on same maybe rage racer or revolution possibly you know it is, it. I, I used to have it back in the day and i played bits of it here and there and i, I remember just thinking it suffered from the the typical things that an n64 game suffers from it seemed to like be slow it suffered from a lot of the fog um I mean, everything looked okay in that, and it played okay, but it just never felt anywhere near as good as the original Ridge Racer, in my opinion. Um, so I, I cannot say too much about it, um, other than, you know, it's it's worth a try if you like the Ridge Racer series. It's definitely worth a try, especially now when you can emulate, you know, like Nintendo 64 in 4K and take away the fog and increase the draw distance and stuff like that. It's probably a much better game now, to be honest. Maybe they should do that with Superman 64. <laughs> That's a story uh, that for a day. That fix that pilot. There's a, sto <laughs> <laughs> There's a story for a day, maybe. Yeah. Um, next up in line, I believe you had the uh, Ridge Racer uh, sorry, Ridge Racer on the PSP. Um, now, from everything I read, it was a, a good game. Um, felt nice and tight to handle and everything. I personally never played that one. Um but I have played its sequel, which we'll talk about in a bit more depth shortly. Ridge Racer 6 was released in 2005 on the Xbox 360. Now, I did put a ton of time into this one. Um, what I, from what I understand, I think Ridge Racer PSP was the first game to introduce the Nitrous into the game. So you could actually have three Nitrous storage tanks that you could use. Um, now, Ridge Racer 6 had the Nitrous in as well. It had a ton of tracks in. The music and everything was great. Pulled in a lot of the old tracks and everything. Game played very tight and everything with the analog controls and stuff. Really good game on the 360. It's actually playable now as well on the Series X and everything in upscales. So if you can get your fingers on a copy of Ridge Racer Type 6, I'd recommend picking it up because um, it is a very good game to play. The next one in line that I played, and I don't know if it was Ridge Racer 7 or Ridge Racer 2 on PSP came out, before the other or whatnot, but I played Ridge Racer 7 on the PS3. Now that felt like the taking Ridge Racer 6 from the 360 improved the graphics a little bit. It was actually one of the only games that ran in 1080p at 60 frames on the PS3 um, at launch, and it had a 3D mode as well, um, so you could play it in stereoscopic 3D. Um, again, I think they added a few more tracks. They kept the night was in, stuff like that. Yeah, added Probably a few added a few features, of the yeah. bonus things in, but I haven't had time to really look into it. But um, it did. It played very well, exactly what you'd expect. Nice and tight gameplay. Again, felt similar to what Ridge Racer One way and pull yourself out of your drifts really well and stuff like that. But for me, the next game that came out, which is Ridge Racer Two on the PSP, that in my opinion is the crown jewel in the Ridge Racer franchise. Now I've played this game to death, and I must say it was brilliant back on the PSP. But if you can get the opportunity to do so now. If you can emulate it on something like PPSSPP, you can actually notch it up to something like 4K. It's 60 frames a second anyway. It's buttery smooth gameplay, and it's absolutely amazing. You've got the Nightwish. You've got extremely tight drift mechanics that you can negotiate your way out of any drift as easily as you like. It's got the analog steering and everything, so you've got that extra little bit of control. It's basically got everything from all of the good Ridge Racer games throughout the, you know, is it? I've got it written down here. We've got um, 18 years between Ridge Racer Arcade and Ridge Racer on the Vita, which we'll get to yeah. shortly. You know, it takes everything from all those games, delivers it in one package, tons of cars, tons of unlockables, you know, just an absolutely awesome world tour more than that. And for me, it's the game that you've got to play if you fancy revisiting Ridge Racer. Play Ridge Racer 2 on the PSP. So the, uh, the next one, sorry was um, you've got Ridge Racer 3D, I think, was the next one to come out, which was on the 3DS. Now, again, I've owned this, played bits of it. I remember thinking this, this was like a port of Ridge Racer 64. From what I've read, that's not actually the case. Apparently, it's got its own game engine with uh, updated like, car yeah. mechanics and stuff Is like that. Is it using models or from that game, maybe? Well, I thought it did again, but that's I don't know if that's the case or not. But The thing is, I've noticed <clears> that <throat> after, once you get Ridge Racer Revolution out of the way, the games, every game starts to bring its own 
its own cars to the to the game. I mean, like I say, Rage Racer's cars are completely different from anything before. Uh, they all have different models and different names. I mean, the Devil cars, I don't know if you remember, just obviously touching on Rage Racer and for a second, you know, going back, way backwards here. Yeah, yeah. But um, I remember the cars <coughs> being split into four different manufacturers. And yeah. Each manufacturer had a set of vehicles. It would start with, like, the lowest one, you know, the weakest. You start with the weakest car, and you'd work your way up, and they were clearly different strengths. So it wasn't a case of, like, you'd have, say, 12 cars on the track, and you'd have 12 different cars because from one manufacturer because they were clearly in different uh, different tiers, you know, and, and each, the great thing is as well, every single tier would end with its own, in inverted commas, devil car, because it was still general, generalised devil cars, yeah. but they were unique in very different ways. I mean, one of them was actually, what well, looked like a little Fiat 500, but it could go like shit off a stick and it only had one gear. So providing you kept your finger on the accelerator, it would just get faster and faster and faster. So, <laughs> and it was tiny. You know, so then that was a devil car, and that was a, the secret sort of $1 million car, because you had to pay for the cars. You yeah. had to actually spend credits on them. And there was one that was very clearly inspired by the original devil car, uh, and, the, and say there was four different types, of, again, they're all very cool. But like I say, starting with Rage, all of the different vehicles were now much, I mean, obviously better graphics anyway, but they were very different from what what you'd been seeing before, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. The, um, the next one after Ridge Racer 3D, it might have been around about the same time, that was Ridge Racer Vita, and I had this game, played for about five minutes, realised how shallow of a game it was, and never touched it again. And I just looked today out of interest, because I didn't know if it had updates that made it better or anything, but I think the general consensus worldwide on that one is that it was absolutely appalling. It was just a shell of a game, basically, which is a big shame. That was the last main entry into the franchise. Yeah, that's maybe know. what killed it. I, and, you know, if... If that was their intent to release a half baked piece of crap, um, you know, then they should have known better than to do that because at the end of the day, it's killed off what for me today would still be a great franchise. And I'd love to see like a, a Ridge Racer on the Switch or something like that, which is where I, I don't think Ridge Racer will be dead forever, though. I think it's going to be I one of the it'll, it'll lie dormant for a while, um, like some of my other favorite franchises, and then just pop back up again. With something new, and they'll look at all of the past games and that, and give an idea about what what really popped for people, and then you'll just see an amazing installment come out. So I don't think Ridge Racer's dead. Now there was a couple of um, a couple of little kind of other spin-offs from the main series as well. I won't go into it much. There was um, back in two thousand and three on the GameCube, PS two, and Xbox, they released R Racing Evolution. I don't know if you remember that. I do. It, it right. was it was basically a sim kid, so you could you know you could adjust your brakes, adjust your hand, and all that kind of stuff. And it had uh, licensed cars yeah. as well. It was like Le Mans and stuff like that. And it, for, I remember playing it a little bit back in the day, um, and I actually thought it was quite a good game. Like it was a, a reasonable attempt at a you know a, a typical Forza type game or, or Gran Turismo type game. You know, not as much in depth as those, but a nice like balance. And um, it played really well, if I'm honest. Uh, one I'd love to go back and maybe try a little bit more. Now that we've obviously got, you get any cheap as well to get now. Probably yeah, you got the original on, on GameCube. Just some of the stuff's quite cheap. <laughs> um, there was also a Ridge Race Unbounded. Now, remember that one? This one, I'm a bit torn over. I mean, it was Bugbear Entertainment who developed this. Flatout. For yeah, exactly. And I think it was straight after the Flatout games that they developed this. And now I've tried to like it a couple of times, and I just kind of get into it. There's like a, quite a bit of destructible um, parts in the city in that way. You can blow up like a garage entries and stuff like that and create like roadblocks for the other cars and stuff. It's a diff- It's a uh, European developer as well, though, to give yeah. you moving away from the Japanese cultural style. So It just, I mean, on the 360, it was like 30 frames a second. It played like a dog. Um, now, the PC version, I think I've actually got it on my Steam account would we'll probably play a lot better at 60 frames and stuff, but I just haven't had a chance to really dive into that. But I think I, I will try it again, because I would like to love another Ridge Racer game yeah. that I haven't really played through, you know. But um, that pretty much wraps us up for the, the main line and some of the spin-offs. I think um, I haven't really got much more to say, mate. I think we should look. We should wrap up with a review. Yeah, let's and do I've a got review. A really, I've, my review here is going to be probably the highest one we've done yet because uh, we have RC Ridge Racer, uh, PlayStation, remember? Remember the review does, uh, it is about that yeah, version. Yeah, so, so yeah, the um, main format for, for this podcast is the PlayStation one, so the review will be yeah. around the PlayStation version, yeah. And, I mean, 
just going by the, uh, the the sheer amount of extras that the PS1 version has over its original arcade game, um, and the fact that the experience is still so close to the original machine. Um, like I've said, like I've already said, I mean, and it's a little bit of a negative thing to say about the arcade, but the PlayStation version for me just makes the arcade game near, not completely, but near utterly redundant. Uh, said other than having that cabinet, you know, other than having the cabinet, which uh, I mean, again, you're paying a pound a time for to play a single race. Uh, on a lovely cabinet, and then that's it that you're done, or you're going to pay another three pounds to complete it fully and get no acknowledgement for actually doing it, you know. So yeah. there you go. And so you're guaranteed four pounds down. That's ten percent of what you'll pay for an original PS1 Ridge Racer back in the day. Yeah. You definitely, pay, yeah. Some shops sold them for thirty to thirty five quid. Mm-hmm. You might have got second hand for twenty five, you know. Um so I mean the amount like I say Ridge Racer, twelve Ridge Racer PlayStation, twelve playable cars, arcade one, Ridge Racer two different views, arcade one. Ridge Racer four additional t- tracks over the arcades four, um, and said all all you lose and I mean apart from the main one being the cabinet you're losing a little bit of frame rate and slightly lower polygon count you know I mean um, so as a conversion it's just superb you know it's superb as conversion I'll always try and avoid giving a game a ten out of ten since I think I always believe in you striving for a bit more no game no 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 anything should be considered perfect because where can you go from there you know um, so. But as a game, just as a game to play, I mean, if you had never played the arcade game before, which bear in mind I hadn't before owning the arcade, the PlayStation version, I'd say then that you are, uh, you've you, you've just scored greatly, you know, to get this game. For me, Ridge Racer PlayStation, 9 out of 10, without any hesitation. Um, like I said, it's just near perfection. And it still looks good now, though. It looks good. It says where good. some 3D games, and I'm not even, I'm even, I mean, for a good example, like I, I love the Twister Metal games. Um, Twister Metal 1 does look very poor, you know. Yeah. I mean, and then this came out, you know, a little bit little bit later than Ridge Racer 1, you know, but where Ridge Racer 1's like clean, simple, but go out, but nicely shaded polygon cars still look quite good. Uh, Ridge Racers just look like cardboard, uh, Twister Metals just look like cardboard cutouts, you know. So I think Ridge Racers also aged quite well. So, I mean, we know this anyway because you, you played a challenge just last year at yeah. Nerg. You know, there's yeah, Nerg, yeah. there's a little shout out for something, uh, the North East Retro Gaming yep. uh, Expo, which is very good. But we went to last year's, we've been the last two years, and last year's uh, Mark played a Ridge Racer competition and come first. What did you win for that again? Um, I, got a, like a, <coughs> I got a Thanos board game yeah, and, uh, and a Nerg Cup. Uh, it was uh, great, man. I right. still, I, I mean, I, I drink out of the cup, obviously, but it's my favourite cup. It's <laughs> his favourite cup, right? It was so, better than a trophy because I can actually use it. That's what I do. That's all you need. The, <laughs> you wouldn't need a trophy, just the fact that you got it, you got there. Me, I yeah, was yeah, it. Just so you know, just for the record, so all our millions of viewers can, uh, millions, you know, of viewers can uh, have a record of this. I was absolutely atrocious, but uh, I hadn't played for years. To be fair, where he, he had. Yeah, had. I'd, you, I'd you tell me you played the, the same night. Eh? No, the, the, the night before. So I, I, I played atrociously. But anyway, saying uh, Ridge Racer for me, 9 out of 10. Um, near as, perf- as perfect as you can get. And for a launch title, it's reasons why this is why the PlayStation just blew the competition away. I mean, I am a massive lover of the Saturn. And I'm also, I also respect and have interest in the, in the bad consoles of the era, which are obviously like the 3DO, the CDI, uh, Jaguar, 32, uh, CD32. I'm, I'm interested in all of them, and I, and I like the I owned them all. At fact, one point. I where we are, but I mean they're expensive as fuck now as well. But we like to, I like to still take interest in those consoles and the games that were released. Yeah, uh, obviously they did still come out slightly before the Saturn and, and PlayStation One, but they were about the closest thing they had to a competitor before the N64 come out, which was quite a bit later. So yeah, Ridge Racer, near perfect package. I mean, if you if you're somebody who's young and you listen to these podcasts. And you want to play like a historical game that you probably will still like, even though you've never played it for. And you don't mind, obviously, the, the graphics of 1994, 95, then pick up a PS1 and pick up Ridge Racer. The yeah, thing is, it's not, it's, not a rare, it's not a rare game, is it, as well? No, no. I mean, no. you'll probably get a decent, complete, good condition one for a tenner. Um, you, you'll pay much more the high up the condition, and you may pay a little bit more than that. You might look 15, but you won't pay an absolute fortune for Ridge Racer 1. If you're not too bothered, you might even pick up a loose disc, and it's such a simple game to play and get into that you don't really need an instruction manual for this game it's just if I had a good chance of if you buy a PS1 now from eBay it'll come with at least one game and that game will be Ridge Racer 
So, do, do you know if it was released on the um, Sony PlayStation Classic? I can't remember if it came. I, I think I would have thought. I would have thought. I'm quite sure. It definitely was a Ridge Racer Revolution because I remember picking it up and nearly having it, nearly buying that one. No, so. I don't mean the Classic Discs. I mean the, uh, oh, the, the console. Oh, the, the Sony. Oh, the service. The, no, the console. The, the Sony PlayStation con little mini console. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. See, I mean, to be fair, if you had that the choice of that one or Rev, I would have went with that one still over Revolution. Yeah, it's a better track. absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, Revolution comes with a couple of extra cars, a couple of the Devil and the Angel, the, the extra the Devil and There's the some, Angel. some good music tracks on there as and well. And some, right? some great tracks in its own right and that and all. But like, I think if you're going to pick one, I would have just picked the original. But then why wouldn't you just have both, really? Because they're, they're both good enough in their own right that, like, I, I, w I would have both of them, I mean, which we did. I think time. it was criminal that I never released a dual pack with both on the same disc. Because, I mean, the only thing they would have had the issue with, with was Red Book Audio, but they could have, later on in the life Condensed of the PlayStation, it, right. they, they made it, I think it was probably MP3 or some other. A lot of later um, PS1 games. Some After like 98, audio. they stopped being, 98 or 99, they stopped being um, Red Book Audio anyway, Yeah, they? yeah, that was it, I. But like I say, that's my review. Nine out of ten for Ridge Racer, the highest score I've given yet in our podcasts, um, and I feel wholly deserved. It's unusual now because I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a game collector myself, and uh, I tend to collect like a lot of different game series and that, which is certain types. And I've never collected Ridge Racer games, but it's just a game that I've grew up with, so I've got a lot of love for. So yeah. even though it's it's not something I sort of like spent my whole life collecting, it's a game that sort of definitely formed me middle sort of console years if you want to call it that you know so and it stood out to me and we played it all the time and if i weren't playing it, i was listening to music anyway mark your review mate well for me um i mean which racer holds an awesome and hell of a lot of nostalgic uh, feelings for us in the sense that it was probably probably one of the first i don't it probably was the first 3d game other than star wing star fox that I played properly um, at home. Now, Glenn mentioned earlier on when he got the PlayStation, he got Twisted Metal, Destruction Derby, and Ridge Racer. Now, Ridge Racer was the one that I was more excited about playing over over the other two. And um, I remember just playing it, being terrible at it at first, but quickly learning how to be quite good at it to the point where I think it, w within a couple of weeks I'd unlocked everything, the devil car and that, you know. And... Um, this game, you know, I'd never played the arcade game at that point, I don't think. So that was the first true Ridge Racer experience for me. And I remember just being blown away. Every time I put it on, I'd, I'd be excited to get it on. I'd be excited to wake up so I could play I'd Ridge be Racer. excited just to load in Galaxy in. To, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were having a class little mini game there that played just like the original anyway. <laughs> and that, that, we haven't even started the main event yet. And by playing that in a certain way and being good at it, you unlock an amazing yeah, secret. You know? cars, yeah. But... It, it was just, it was such a good game. I mean, look, I, I didn't, back then I, I was, what, 10? No, 12? It'd be about, 13, yeah. Something uh -huh. like that. I, you know, I didn't know about frame rates. I, I didn't have a clue what 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second. Simpler was. times. I didn't care that the textures weren't as good as the arcade and stuff like that. Or what I could see in front of me was this amazing 3D game that felt really real. And I was the coolest driver in the world. That's how it made you feel. And not on top of that, you know, this was the days when the rave music was still huge. You yeah. know, like the techno that was in there it was amazing music. And it was just a game that made you feel good playing it. And this week, I felt good playing it again. You know, it's, I can look back at it now. You know, I play, I play a lot of Forza. I play a lot of, played a lot of Gran Turismo and, and before they got crap, in my opinion. Um, and you no know, racing games are probably the one genre that's come a long, long, long way. More than anything else, in my opinion, graphically, you know, physics stuff like that. It's it's where you can really shine on what you can do with the consoles of the current generation and stuff. But Ridge Race is special. You can just always go back and find some fun in that game. For me, I think twenty years time, I'll still be going back and playing Ridge Racer. Because it's that good of a game. I wanted to add something as well, just to Mark's, before Mark finishes off his review. Um, it's just, again, it goes back to what I said about um, how much of a, com a great conversion Ridge Racer was. Now, if you just go back to the 80s for a second, we'll use a game we've, I've been mentioning all the way through, which is Outrun. Um, it, I mean, the hardware of that time could never uh, dream of replicating the arcade the home hardware could never dream of replicating the arcade hardware of the time, you know. So, I mean, a lot of people in that day and age, say in 1987, when um, when 
Elgo and basically came out, you know, on the computers. You, you, you probably had a Spectrum or a Commodore 64. I mean, if you were rich, you might have had an Amiga or an Atari ST, and they were just coming out then. So, um, you know, say you had a Specky, which is what most people had. There's no way you could even get anywhere close to the arcade experience at all. I mean, you're play, you playing what... I mean, uh, 10 out of 10 for effort from the developers, but you were literally playing a very pale imitation of a game that just had no hope, yeah. you know. Uh, it, it, it just, like, compared to the arcade game. Plus, again, the cultural difference as well of European developers who, to be quite frank, didn't give that much of a fuck when it came to uh, quality control. Uh, and, I mean, there's a lot of time constraints as well, so I can't blame them fully for that. But when we played these conversions through the years, going back to the computer era and that, um, they, they had no hope, you know. So with the advent of definitely like Mega Drive and Super Nintendo, but but really, you know, 100% kicked in once you got the PlayStation and, and to uh, some degree the Saturn as well, uh, you had like near perfection, you know. I mean, you couldn't get better than that or so. Yeah. So for, for me... Like I say, Ridge Racer is special. It's not rose tinted glasses. It's still no, no, it still it's holds it's the same fun that still I had back playable. in the day. And the graphics, you know, you look back on it and you think, aye, 1994, yeah, it looks rough. You can emulate it, you can make it look prettier, <clears throat> but it doesn't need to be made look prettier. It, the game is as what it was, and it's you know, it does its job perfectly. And it's all about the fun with Ridge Racer, and it delivers it in spades. Definitely, it's, definitely. it's excellent. So I think, I think for me, it, it it probably sounds like a nine and a half, but I can't. I've got to give it a nine because I, I need to reserve. And I'm not like you. I will give tens, but there's a couple of games in my head that will get a ten. I don't know. I don't know if I can never give a ten. But but Ridge Racer has to be a nine for me as well. It's a fantastic game. And if you haven't played it, you've got to get out there and, and you know, even if you have to emulate it, which I don't, I, I'm not going to say I don't condone or do condone because sometimes it is just easier, especially if you can't pick it up somewhere else or if Namco don't want to sell you a copy of Ridge Racer, fair enough. But, you know, get it played, enjoy it, take it in. You'll you'll understand what we're talking about straight away. It's just a really, really bloody good game and uh, a better version than the arcade, in my opinion. So... Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, without a doubt, yeah. And uh, failing that, get yourself a PSP and play Ridge Racer 2 because, wow, that's probably the best version of, of them all for me. It is the best. You need to play that one, Glenn. I probably will at some point. At but some um, point. I think that probably does us for today, mate. And, um, yeah, we'll we'll see you guys next time. I hope you yep. enjoyed the episode. As always, you, Glad know, you listened. please, please give us a like, subscribe, comment. Um Drop us, you know, drop us some comments over so we can have a chat with you. Tell us what you feel about Ridge Racer. You know, any other games you might like to see. Yeah, give us a few ideas. Give us a few ideas. You might see them uh, covered. And uh, you know, if it's uh, if it's a good comment, if it starts a good discussion, we will read it out in the podcast and and have a proper chat about it. And uh, yeah, we'll hope we'll hopefully see you next week. So see you soon. Thank you Thanks. and good night. Bye now.